Well, I'm joined today by William C. Tracy, author of the Dissolution uh, series. Seeds of Dissolution is, I guess, the, the main book. But first of all, William, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. Now, to start, I did notice on your social media that you recently went to DragonCon. Now, how was that? It looked like it was a lot of fun. Oh, yes. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, my wife and I is probably uh, our eighth year there. Um, and we got to we got to make costumes and cosplay for this year. It's about eighty thousand people, so you're you're packed in these hotels in Georgia with a bunch of people in costume, and from you know Marvel characters to anime to stuff they've just made up, and huge <laughs> costumes and little costumes. There's a there's there's a Fallout power suit there. Oh wow! Um, yeah, big guy in an Iron Man costume, all sorts of stuff. It, it certainly did look uh, very interesting. And now I did read on your author bio as well that you're an avid video gamer. Yes. Which begs the question, Xbox or PlayStation? Ah, PC. Oh, PC. <laughs> okay, fair enough. What, what's your addiction right now? Um, well, I, actually right now I'm playing Zelda, um, but <laughs> Breath of the Wild. But uh, I just, on the PC, just finished doing um, uh, Dishonored 2. Oh, okay. Uh, which I really enjoy. I, I grew up with the, well, not grew up, but I was in college when, that, when the original Thief games came out and really enjoyed those. And then um, the Dishonored is sort of a, a, a spiritual sequel to that. Yeah, for sure. Now, your day job, I understand, is as an engineer. Now, mm-hmm. does this help in your storytelling at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. You, everybody thinks of engineers as sort of very logical mathematical people but um it's actually a creative job um you're you know you're creating new processes new parts new things like that um and, and having you know the science background helps of course so i you know in the writer job it helps with my time management and and setting goals and, and figuring out what i'm doing but also having a physics background helps with the, the space side of the the science fantasy that i write um and then being able to communicate uh, efficiently um, and know how writing uh, is fluidly formed and, and creating sentences and stuff like that is is it's it's good to have that sort of process in the back of your head while you're writing. Yeah, absolutely. And I also understand that you're a martial artist as well. Now, I'm assuming you would incorporate that knowledge into your books when there's sort of fight scenes or any sort of body movement sort of situations. Yeah, there there are fight scenes. Um, it was actually. Um, Sort of going back to DragonCon a little bit, uh, we went to Worldcon uh, as well, which is the, the World Science Fiction Convention in uh, California this year. Uh, and I was on a panel where we did um, reenacting fight scenes. Okay. And you know, there was three or four of us, and we would, we would go out on the mat, and uh, one person would read the passage from the story, uh, and then we'd try to put it in real life and say, does this actually work? Um, so one, I got to do the, the fight from the end of Dune, which was okay. uh, very cool and actually works quite well. I was surprised. Um, and then we got to do a fight from my book, which was, which is fun. That, so, that's really cool. Different. And like martial, martial arts is obviously it's a broad term. What's, do you have like a, a specialty I'm assuming? Yeah. So I, I teach karate, uh, and specifically it's water root karate. Um, so it's a, it's a traditional Japanese art. Um, it's, it takes from Shotokan, if you're familiar from that, um, and jujitsu, and combines them so it's a little bit higher and, and more fluid and efficient, which, again, works well with my engineering side because I like efficiency and, exactly. and doing things that I can. Now, your books, they take place in the dissolution verse. I think I've pronounced that correctly. So tell us about this place. So this is, well, again, combines my sort of engineering and, well, and, and music as well, love of music, which... Um, is again a mathematical thing and engineering thing. Um, so if, if you look at a lot of the, the ancient religious texts or, or spiritual scriptures and things like that, um, you see the the universe is being based on the music of the spheres. Or there's a lot of, of stuff about how music um, incorporates into the foundation of the universe. So I sort of took that thought and ran with it. And all the magic is based on music. It's the the practitioners can hear the symphony that underlies the universe okay and so they make changes to it with the notes that define their own ex- experiences uh, and um when they change the notes then that affects physical reality um so you're expressing mathematics and music um and turning it into reality okay 
So that, I mean, it sounds like a fascinating world that you've created. Now, I did see it, and a little bit of ignorance on my part here, I did see The Seeds of Dissolution was sort of book one in your series. And then the other books are sort of numbered 0. 0.5, 0. 0.7, 0. 0.3, and 0. 0.7, I think. Now, is there is there a reason for this? Are they are they like pre, like sort of side stories to the main one, or how how does that work there? Yeah, that's that's about right. Uh, the so the Seeds of Dissolution is the first of a big epic space opera that combines everything all together. Um, it follows a young man who, and you're learning about the society. Um, I actually wrote that uh, probably started on it about 20 years ago um, when I was a teenager, um, and that was terrible. And, and it, the story is much better now. Uh, <laughs> But before I published or self-published this one, um, sort of to get get into the self-publishing sphere, um, I published a, a prequel, basically, which is the story of how two of the main characters in The Seeds of Dissolution first met and how the, what, the, what their first adventure was. So that was um, Tuning the Symphony, and it's a novella form. Um, so it's a, it's a shorter story and gave me the ability to, to look at, at uh, a shorter package and figure out how to write that and publish it before I went on to a full novel. Okay. So I'm, I'm keeping that same theme basically and putting out two novellas and then a big novel and then I've just put out two more novellas so that I'm going to have the second novel will be coming out as soon as I get finished with it. <laughs> <laughs> and is there a recommended order to, like, are you better off reading The Seeds of Dissolution than going back and sort of doing 0. 0.5, 0. 0.7, 0. 0.3, 0. So what I, what I try to do with this is make it so you can read them in any order. Okay. Um, so you can, if you want to just read, you know, you're just a big epic fantasy sort of person, you can just read the novels and you're fine. Um, if you like all the extra world building and side stories, then you can read this, the side ones and you can really read them in any order. Um, they, they will have slight connections to each other, but um, it's specifically written so it gives you a little bit of the magic for each book. It tells you about the characters for each book. Um, and they're short contained stories. Okay, because I do have Seeds of Dissolution that's lined up on my Kindle ready to go. I just haven't, uh, I wasn't sure if I should be reading the, the, the sort of the point five and point seven first, or if I'm okay just to, to jump straight in yeah. there. Yeah, you can, you can jump straight in. Um, the, basically, the, the starting points I give people are either Tuning the Symphony or the Seeds of Dissolution. Okay. Um, are good starting points. Okay. Now, I know in the past that you've entered the self publishing fantasy blog off. I think I've got that. All correct. Now, how have you fared in the past, and did you enter this year? Is the big question. So, so I guess spoilers. Yes, I did enter this year. Um, uh, I did put tuning the symphony in last year, which did not make it through the first cut. But honestly, I wasn't really expecting it to. Um, it's a novella. It's a shorter form. It's my first book, um, and and it's up against these really, really good, really good um, self-published fantasy that these authors have ten or twelve books out and, and are putting their latest you know, the start of a series, because you can only have the, the first book in a series. Yeah. So there's, they're putting their new series in there. Um, so I didn't really expect it to go far. Um, it did have a, a, a good review. I was going to um, say, I was when I was sort of like sort of doing a bit of research for this, I did see it was listed as one of the, one of the sort of the, the better books from, from last year's um, competition, I guess, for lack of a better term. So like you say, it, it was, it was like thought of very highly, which I thought was something that you could be proud of. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So I'm hoping to, to go farther with uh, with this book. Um, made it past well. So each there's there's uh, ten divisions. Each division has thirty books, and a yeah. blogger is or a group of bloggers is working on them. Um, so the the group I'm in has already eliminated five books. So still in the running so far. So now up against twenty five rather than thirty. Books. There we go. <laughs> and. Um... Now, what I was going to ask, you've kind of touched on it, but what do we get from a William C. Tracy uh, book? Yeah, because I understand, I think there's a bit of steampunk in, in your books as well as fantasy and this whole space yeah, opera, and yeah. I've got my writer's hat on. Yeah. So, um, and and uh, I'll do conventions um, and, and usually go in full costume, full steampunk costume for that. Um, briefly considered it for today, but I figured I'd be a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, combine, I combine engineering, martial arts, love of music and, and just love of, of world building and writing and what I do. Um, I try to have something that's a fun read. You know, I, I don't personally don't really go in for, for the grim dark sort of thing. Um, you know, I'll, I'll have obviously, you know, heavy emotion or characters or, or building in, in, in books, but not um, specifically really depressing or bad things happen. I try to focus on more of the, the upbeat and, um, you know, 
fun character interactions. Okay. Um, while still looking at a sort of epic scale. Yeah. So you're not going to have like Bambi's mum being shot in a necessarily in a. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> if, if so it's it's way off scene. <laughs> yeah. But actually, the the most the most graphic one I've written is one of my latest books, which is called The Society of Two Houses, and that is a Sherlock Holmes esque sort of story. Um, that's this is actually a real prequel. It takes place about fifty years before the rest of the okay. books, but it's it's a young. Um, character that appears later and he's in, investigating a murder mystery so of course there's some death and dismemberment in that one and did you just want to quickly just run through the titles so i said there is the seeds seeds of disillusion as which is like the the main book but what are the titles of the other four i think it is yeah so there's four other ones so as i said uh, tuning the symphony is sort of a good starting point that's the first novella i put out um and that is sort of a a coming of age slash adventure and a little bit of, of murder um, which takes place with two characters on their first journey. One is an aspiring magus, um, and you know, finding out what happened to the brother of one of another character. Um, so it's sort of a general coming of age, easy, easy story. The second one is actually two shorter stories uh, put together, um, and this one is a little bit more steampunk and political intrigue focused. Uh, the first one is a, a group of merchants um, who have some suspicious cargo that they have to transport, and it's their only way to get off planet. Uh, the, and then the second one is um, the Magus, who is going to be the first person to fly a space a spaceship. Okay. Uh, so this, I don't know, I probably should step back. The society is it's based on magic instead of technology. Okay. So there are multiple home worlds. But they're connected by music-based magic portals rather than spaceflight. So I get to go back and sort of do steampunk Victorian era with aliens and, and magic. Um, so those are the first two novellas, and then The Seeds of Dissolution came out as the first novel. Um, and then that is a big epic space opera that brings everybody together, and there's lots of different characters. Um, and we'll have at least three books and possibly four, as I'm outlining the the second book and finding more that I want to, <laughs> that I want to put in it. Um, so after that, uh, I wrote that one last year and then wrote two novellas the beginning of this year between like January and May. Oh, wow. So put out. Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> um, the first one was Society of Two Houses, was a Sherlock Holmes-esque mystery story, um, which had me doing a lot of research into mystery and how mysteries are plotted and, and how you get to the surprising yet inevitable conclusion. Um, and then the last one that came out is a, a book that is more suitable for mid-grade kids as well as being an enjoyable adult yeah. story. Um, and that is sort of a Jules Verne-style adventure with a group, uh, a crew that is climbing to the top of a miles-high wall to see what is at the top of it. That sounds. It all sounds very interesting. I, I said I've, I've got it queued up, ready to go. So I'm really looking forward. To, I do see it up on the shelf there behind you as well. I think I'm eagle enough to spot it up there. So it's uh, like I said, everybody. It's 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 been very well. All of them have been very well reviewed. Everything that I've seen, and I well, I will review it myself when I do get a chance to finish it. So stay tuned for yeah, that. Yeah, I, I tell people, you know, everybody I go, I sell to it at cons, anything like that. Um, as being a self-published and independent author. One of the best things people can do is rate your books. Oh, absolutely! I can definitely, I, I can agree and understand with that. Yeah, because it's the biggest thing. If you, even if you do like the Goodreads giveaway and you'll send out all these books and you know you get one rating from it, no reviews, and it's just like, well, that's cost me you know, fifty bucks to get all those sent off and posts and everything and nothing for it. So yeah, it's and you have now hinted at it as well that there's what is in the pipeline. So there is a, a sort of a second major book that's coming up. Any news on that when it's going to be released or? No. That one I am hoping to finish um, and put it out maybe late next year. Um, so that'll be the, the sequel to The Seeds of Dissolution. A direct sequel picks up um, about a month after the other one left off. Um, and at that point, if you have read the other four side novellas, you'll get a lot of extra interaction between the characters. Okay. Uh, and actually the 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 young man uh, in the seats uh, sorry the young man in uh, society of two houses um, fifty years ago is now going to be an old man who's going to be a point of view character in the the new sequel okay um, sort of working on the sidelines so so there's some cool stuff and I think writing novellas actually helps me sort of brainstorm in the back and and, and figure out 
what new cool ideas I'm going to put into my next tale. Absolutely. And so this dissolution of that one, the world that your stories take place in, like how many, what's the grand plan? Like, are we talking like five in the series, like major books? Like, what's the... So I, have, I put a lot of pressure on you mentioning five, haven't I? I should have said three. <laughs> well, I have, uh, I have folders on my computer for the first nine stories oh, wow. of novels. Yep. Um, so I have five of those out now. Yeah. Um, I have, and, and, and the other thing, if you sort of noticed from me listing these, is they're all a little bit different genre. Yeah. Um, and I like that so I can, if somebody comes up to a table at a con, I can say, well, what do you like to read? Do you want to read a mystery? Do you want to read an adventure? Do you want to read, a, you know, whatever. Um, so along with an adventure, political intrigue, epic space opera, mystery, and an adventure, um, I'm planning to do a heist story, which will be fun to research. Um, I'm planning to do a romance, like a, a straight love story. Um, and then I'm going to have, of course, probably four books and seats, the actual storyline there. So that brings me up to what, five, say nine, 10, 11, maybe. <laughs> wow, it's, I mean, it's, so it is something—a world that you can really sort of get yourself lost in and know that it's going to continue on. So that's it's very exciting. I've got to say, very exciting. Right? Yeah, thank you. I, that that was the plan with it. Then the, that I I came up with this and started writing it and realized that I had too many stories to put in one book, and that's really where these side side novellas came from. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now there are going to be in the in the uh, description of the of the video. There's going to be links uh, for the sales links for the book, so make sure you check those out, as well as uh, Williams, get, let me know some of his social media um, contacts, I guess, so they'll be in there as well, so if you do want to keep up, and I know you are very, very open, especially on Twitter, with, with sort of how your work's going and everything, so it's definitely worth checking that out as well, if you do want to sort of keep in touch with how things are going, and latest announcements and things like that, and I do believe that you have kindly agreed to read a little bit of a passage for us from, from one of the books. I have. Um, now this is just a teaser. There is, if you go to the, the sort of the featured channels on the side of of the bar there, there's there's a Williams channel where he has full of like dramatic readings of. I think it's the first two chapters and a couple of other things as well. Um, so if you enjoy this, check that out because it's definitely worthwhile. But uh, for now, this is this is what we have. Yeah, great. And uh, I will say one other thing that if you want to uh, sign up for my mailing list, you get a free short story that actually accompanies uh the seeds of dissolution perfect so you can have a little taste of it for free and then and then jump into the main thing so it's probably so, worth doing so this is the beginning chapter one of the seeds of dissolution shadow over the sun from the start i was calling the voids dreams because of their function it frustrates me others insist on ignoring or even suppressing my terminology for the phenomenon it is to be, mu it is to be much more descriptive than void Journal of Oregon Kairesi, Kyrian Magus of the Houses of Communication and Power. <clears throat> Sam was reading when the sun dipped. As he looked up from his book, he caught the sky outside his window shading in the twilight. Overhead, the light blinked off, then on, and the music playing on his laptop, Beethoven 7, croaked a discordant jumble of notes before the screen went black. A breath of cold air left goosebumps on his arms. What the? Sam pushed up from his chair as the overhead light faded again. His breath caught in his throat, like he had swallowed a lump of ice. His room was not large, made smaller by the piles of boxes making up his collection, and now shadows rose between stacks of waist-high containers. He wormed through them in the dim light, heart racing. Was this really happening, or was he having an attack? Why now? It took two tries to pick up his grandfather's pocket watch from where it rested on the end table beside his bed. His hand shook, and the thump of his heartbeat nearly overpowered the rhythmic ticking transmitted through his palm. He focused on the mechanical beat, let it inform his body with the regular beat of time. Calm down. The stillness abated him, left him unsteady. Everything is going dark in the middle of the day. At least the watch was working. He made sure to keep it wound and kept it safe in his room. While watching the darkened sky, his other hand fingered the lid of a small shoebox. His collection of boxes contained grass clippings, shells, sand, and other things brought by friends and customers of his aunt. They reminded him of, fav of favorite sights and spells. However, the shoebox contained things more precious than the rest. Half a belt, stiff from water damage, and the heel of a woman's left shoe sheared off cleanly. No, can't think of them now. They're gone, and I can't change it. He shivered at another gust of cold air. 
The room felt like late January instead of August. He eyed the window, but the thought of opening it, letting in the places he didn't know, made his hand sweat. His hand left the box, moving to the window pane. He hissed and shook his, shook his fingers. The window was colder than the house, which meant outside must be too. He breathed out and ra raised his watch to his ear, listening to the steady beat. Is this all in my head? He hadn't heard a transformer blow, and there was no storm. It was so quiet, his rough breathing was like a train. He rubbed his arms, and a quick touch on his laptop's case nearly numbed his finger. His cell phone was powered down and wouldn't restart. Aunt Martha will know what to do. Get to safety. Sam weaved through the precise stacks of boxes, trembling. She would be in her sewing shop. Sam wiped sweaty hands on his shorts before pulling a coat from the closet and socks from a drawer. He dropped his watch in a pocket of the coat, but kept one hand on it. If the power outage kept up, he couldn't log in for his shift in technical support. What will they think? Will they fire me? He couldn't get his ethics essay done either, and he had to email it in by tomorrow night for the ethics theory class in his online community college. The chill air in the hall made him regret the shorts, but he shrugged his coat off, then leaned against the wall, pulling his socks on carefully. If the seams were going the wrong way, they'd just distract him, and that was, there was too much going on already. He closed his eyes. Don't shut down. Keep moving.